Today we're talking about offsetting and automating your text scrolls. I've been getting questions about how I lay out text in my text walls that scroll. So I wanna dive in and talk about how I do this and automate some of the process to speed up my workflow and make it as easy as possible to add more text layers like this. So we're gonna be using an expression on the anchor point to lock the text. And then we're gonna be using source rect at time to evaluate the length of the text. So as you change it, it automatically updates and still duplicates the layer the same distance away from the original layer. If you're finding this channel helpful, do me a favor and like and subscribe so that you're the first person to know about each new tutorial. Let's jump in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go up here to my text tool and click on that. Click in here and I'm gonna type baller FX. Great, once that's selected, I wanna align it to the middle. So when this is selected, you see my anchor point is on the lower left side and is outside the bounding box here. So what I like to do is if I hit A, pull up the anchor point, I wanna lock this anchor point right in the middle. So when the text length is different, I know that I'm always gonna be able to do the math on setting the text according to the width of my current text. So I'm gonna add an expression here on the anchor point. So alt click, and we're gonna make two variables var x and var y. So we have an array here on anchor point, which means there's two different properties separated by a comma. So we need to make sure our expression returns an array. And the way that we're gonna do this is by looking at the x here and the y here. And we're gonna use source rect at time so on var x, we're gonna say this layer dot source rect at time, and I just start typing and then options appear. So then I just select this to make sure that I have everything correct because it is camel cased. And if you don't camel case it, uh, it is a reserved term. So you are not gonna get the same results. So by starting to type and then selecting it, I ensure that it's correct syntax there. And there's a couple different ways to call up source vector at time. There's left, there's width, there's top, and there's height. So we're starting with left, which would assign the anchor point to the left side of the text. And since we want in the middle, we're going to also add, if I hit plus and copy this first one, paste it, and if I double click on left, I can change this to width. Now, if I do width, if I do left plus width, the anchor point's gonna end up on the far end of my text, but I want it in the middle, so I need to divide by two. And that's just on the width. So left anchors it to the left side, then we're adding the width, which would anchor it to the right side, so divided by two is gonna put that right in the middle. So now that I have this one, I'm gonna copy it and paste it for Y and just change these terms. So for Y, we have top and height. And again, since I want this in the middle, I need that divided by two. If you want it on the top, you just leave it as top. And if you want it at the bottom, get rid of the divided by two. Okay, so in order to return the array and use the variables that we created here, we need to add brackets, which are right above the apostrophe key. So if I hit it once, it's gonna auto front and back bracket for me. And then I'm just gonna type X comma Y because we have X and we have Y. So when I click off, you're gonna see my text jumps and that's only because the anchor point is now perfectly centered. So I can recenter this by using my align panel. And if I hit my apostrophe key, you can see it's exactly in the middle of the comp. Great. So we want to automatically fix the next text, a duplicate of this text, just to the right 
of this one. So if I duplicate this text, it's going to maintain the same anchor point. If I hit A, you'll see that the expression's still on there. So we're going to work in position here. And if you're if you don't see an X and a Y position, that means they're not separated. So right click and make sure that separate dimensions has this check next to it. If you have posi just position, then that means they're not separated. So make sure you separate them because we're just going to work in the X. So let's alt click on the X position to add an expression here. And I'm going to make up a couple variables here. So var X start equals and I'm going to tie this one to this position. So we want want to build this text based off of the starting point for the first layer that we created. All right. So then we want to also create x distance. And I'm going to take this layer dot source rect at time dot width. So now if I do x start plus x distance and click off our two variables, we have both text layers side by side fixed here. So now what I want to do is I want to create a space here that I can control and I don't have to input every single time. So what I'm going to do is hit con Control or Command, Alt, Shift, and Y, and that's going to add a null. Otherwise, you can go up here to Layer, New, Null Object. And on this null, if I go into the Effects Panels and right-click, I'm going to add an Expression Control and a Slider. I'm going to call this Spacing. and I need to go back in here and add my spacing. So var spacer equals, and I'm going to pick whip up to the slider that I created. Okay. So now I can add spacer. Great. When I click off, you see it did absolutely nothing, and that's only because spacing is at zero. So if I make something like 50, it's going to give me that spacing. And the reason I do it with a slider is for a couple of reasons. A, I can animate this if I really wanted to, but primarily it allows me to, uh, when I duplicate this layer, if I want to make an adjustment to the distance here, I don't have to go into each layer and make that adjustment. So there's also one other thing that we need to do. So if I duplicate this one, you're going to see it just duplicates it on top of the layer right below it. And that's not what we want. We want it to automatically go out to the right hand side and space out with that 50, 50 pixel spacing. So if I go back into my text layer here, this one with the exposition expression on it, Everything is pointing to this first layer, this baller FX layer. And I need to change that layer's relation here. So I'm going to go in here. And the way to do this is by saying index plus one. So that's basically saying, look at this number, add one to it. And I'm going to be looking at the transform X position. So when I click off, when I duplicate this now, Actually, let me move this over so you can see this better. When I duplicate this, you're going to see it automatically goes into the right position just because we changed that to say, look at the layer right right below it, index plus one. Look at the right layer right below it, and that's the X start position instead of looking at the first one every single time. So let's duplicate this one more time, and you can see I have another one added out here. and the other benefit now is that I can just animate the X position on my first layer and everything else is going to fall, follow along. So if I actually, we want to, maybe we'll take this back to here, go four seconds and 
you hold shift, it goes faster too. There we go. So this is just going to scroll. And what happens if I make this 150? You can see the spacing between each one of these updates. So maybe we, I'm just messing around now. This isn't, uh, so if I add a keyframe here and I hit U, take this back to the beginning, go to four seconds where this one is, and I take this down to 50. You can ad adjust the spacing here. I'm not saying that's necessarily something that you would want to do, but you have that ability if you wanted to within your scroll, add a little bit more dynamic adjustments there. So now if I wanted to change this text first, I need to make sure that all my text is linked to one master here. So I'm gonna throw this open. I have my text open with the source text. I'm gonna twirl open this layer, Watch this one. I'm just gonna pick whip from this source text to this source text, and then I can right click on the source text and go down to copy expression only, highlight the rest, and command V to paste. So now I can update this and everything is going to maintain. Hope that helps.